It happened again. They followed me. That's so annoying. I wish somebody would stop them. And you know, I hate when people walk by. All those people turn on her. It's like, yeah. Why? Because people photoshopped a shower scene and they admitted to doing it. They did rape drug me and told me to say stuff with amnesia drugs. It's like turning it on the girl in the bar that somebody roofied and they raped them and they didn't know who did it. And they, because they went along with it because they were under an amnesia drug and they had no idea what happened to them. It's stupid on ungodly levels. The people that did the taping before are wanted stalkers from the police. There's a Steve and Eric wanted for stalking for leaving their name on us stupidly. Now I'm going to go through the list again. December 9, 21, 4 p.m. at the Oakland apartment on Cleveland Avenue in Canton, Ohio. Uh, they called him at 4 p.m. All the tapes before were them and not her. And it's just a bunch of men doing crimes down here. December 9, 21, there was a white man ball with dark eyes. Actually was a security guard during the case. Was distributing food at the Stark County Hunger Task Force on 9th Street. Can't please find them. Okay, there's a, they have a list of them. December 9, 21 by 1 p.m. Came out and said, we always knew the tapes before were them and not her, so we never said a word. He talked to investigators by Christmas, and they were down there, and security's walking around. The informant's here. No one's to say a word to her. Two uh, investigators walk out. We're mad this guy knew they did all this stuff to her before and didn't say a word, and it's some guy named Eric trying to help him get away with it. Okay. <sighs> My one client lives on Chapler Church Road in Navarre. Her next door neighbor bumps, uh, their driveways bump into each other in a white house. Um, uh, they told her in March that everything was drugged and photoshopped and she's told the camp police and investigators, okay? So it's Ed and the guy at the Hunger Task Force. Okay, there's also March 2nd to the 3rd, 21, 8 to 10, 30 at night. They said they were going to put two clips together, put me in a porn. It wasn't me, it was them. Then all of a sudden, they're telling people, now the car got them, my car's bugged, that they're going to make a scene dirty. And everybody's like, you're weird with yourself, you did this, you did that. And I'm like, no, I didn't, it made my stomach bleed. Okay? So, it's like, what they were describing, it's like, that's showering. Because it... If you look like you're weird with yourself, and you're not weird with yourself, and you find that repulsive, what are you doing? You're either wiping your butt or you're washing yourself. It's like, that's washing, right? I walk outside because I used to smoke. They're laughing off in the dark. She figured out what they did. It's like, that's a shower scene. Because my apartment's still bugged for that protector light case, and they hacked into it and sold it. And they're outside laughing at me. She figured out what they did. Because the only time you touch yourself like that is shower. She figured out what they did. That's where May 12, 22, Baba's Restaurant in uh, North Canton, Ohio. Um, we found a tape of those boys admitting a shower scene in the other room. May 26, 22, KFC at noon. Now my phone's tapped, okay? And everybody hears. They were in there. The shower scene was done on purpose to make it look weird with yourself, and they can't use it because some idiot man told on them. Well, it was more than one. Okay. There was an African American lady, December 2nd or 3rd, where in November she said she was going to extort money out of the shower scene. Well, someone told her it was all photoshopped and they made everything up. She showed up at Save a Lot, December 2nd or 3rd. I found out they made everything up. Nobody better say a word of 21. Okay. January 1922, Department of Disability on Whipple Avenue in North Canton, Ohio. Man shows up at 11 o'clock in the morning while I'm in there with my client talking to a social worker. They had to buzz him in the back. Uh, she was drugged and told to say it before. Well, someone needs to help. Well, that set off Canton. February 2nd, 22, Burlington Coat Factory. My phone's bugged. Okay. Some guy that looks like the guy that went to Pamer. And not the went to Pamer, but the sheriff that looks like the sheriff that went to Pamer with the agent. Because he pointed out the sheriff, I found out. Okay. He looks young. Just looks like, just like him, like a young brother. He's in there with, um, 
a girl with black spider rose in her hair by the uh, cloth men's clothing aisle. He said, I wish I would have never drugged her and told her to say it before. She's like, it's not funny what's going on. He said, I know, I wish I would have done it. People, we left and we went to save a lot. People were running in there. Oh my goodness, they made it a drug in her and told her to say it before. My client lives on 6th Street. Brown house with an African-American man. He came running out of his house yelling it to the postman. The postman's like, we all heard it. Okay. They also heard... May 25th, 21, 6 p.m. of the church people breaking in before drugging me and telling me to say where to molest yourself. Okay? My one client told Jim and Brian, my neighbors, he heard it and it was too dark for him and I can't work for him because of these idiots. 1295 Harlem, middle apartment, little old white lady screamed at him for the church people breaking in before drugging me and telling me to say where to stuff. Okay? Eight nine twenty one. The apartment building for me, second close to the fence. Rats out, Dave. Or is getting sick on his drinks. And though he defends me on tape, they said he drugged me and told me to say crazy stuff. They told the police a few days later. Okay. June seventh, twenty two is my birthday. Out on Turquoise Street, North Camp, where my client lives, across the street was a split level. They were mocking me. Okay. When the Canton officers, the white SUV. A uh, lady officer, Canton officers there, she's telling them, don't say anything to her. We already know the tapes before with them and not her. We're looking for who was doing it. We never went by, so. Uh -huh. My one client that lives on 6th Street, he's like, Karen, this is crazy. I said, who's crazy? He said, these people, they meant to drugging you and telling you to say it before. He said, and they meant to raping you in front of people in stores. I'm like, stay out of it. I'll tell the police. So, where would you think that you should start a hate crime for the cult? Having people and the retired judge's daughter, because she's mentally ill, kicking my door into the wall. I can actually take away the doorknob head, but at the wall, scratch off this big old hole. I had a patch. Okay? Set up button cameras watching me illegal. You arrested him, right? For stalking. Because that's what it is. It's stalking. Police and agencies can only be in a home under a threat of life. They have to speak to everyone before they start. Or it's abuse and misconduct. And failure to protect is abuse and misconduct. And it goes into the right of privacy. Illegal search and seizure. You didn't have a quarter of being my home. N mm -mm. Because no sitting judge would write his own arrest warrant. That he's breaking constitutional laws and having people stalked in their home. Mm-hmm. Because the police up there said what you did was illegal and they had no idea anybody would be in my home or anybody else's home outside a protective light case and with the statements recorded. Because that would be illegal and he couldn't look or listen. So it's something they can't look or listen, but they know these people were stalking me. Okay? Photoshop shower scenes and date rape dropped me. Mm hmm. So you arrested them, right? Because could I do that to them? No, I'd go to jail. Could you do it to them? No, you go to jail for attempted murder, kidnapping, drugging, stalking. Would they care what's on those tapes? No, just like Officer Reinhardt Louisville comes down to no matter what. Until Will took your statement, he agreed to protect you. There's nothing else. And we could never look or listen to be illegal. Portage County Sheriff, same thing. Maslin Police. November 24, 21. My client is in Maslin Emergency, Altman Emergency Room. It's like emergency room stack care on Wales Road. Maslin officer comes in on November 24th, 21, 8.40 a.m. I'm here to watch her. There's a Steve and Eric stalking her, and we don't know who they are yet. And it's finally got funny after what everything they did. Nothing's missable. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, what are you talking about? Stuff that's not admissible. That they already, police already know they're wanted stalkers. They're druggers, they're kidnappers, and they're trying to attempt, uh, attempt extortion on her. And they're looking for who's actually done it, doing this. They're looking, yeah. So retired Judge Pete, Wilson, the agent that called me back out of his area from the uh, FBI task force in Canton, because I lived in Portage, it should have went to Akron. Because what would they be doing at Because we called them. So why would you give people money that were stalking me? Because you're part of it. Why would you help out stalkers? Because you're part of it. 
why would you help somebody breaking in and date rape drugging a woman so she's sleepwalking for six hours and I heard that freaking Steve was actually raping me hmm why would you help rapist why would you help villains how much money would they give you for them to act like the mafia down here and take over and where would you think it's funny hmm that they're Jeffrey jo Dahmer's Anthony Sowell's huh where do you think Jim Jones what do you think is funny? That stalkers and extortionists and druggers and killers making fun of the victim because they photoshopped a shower scene and date rape her and told her to say something stupid and lied. They had sodium pentothal reports. You put them in jail for it, right? Mm hmm. Because retired Judge Pete's daughter, Michelle, and her sick family is mentally, mentally ill. And they're friends. You know, the way the investigators describe me. Karen's a victim of an occult that drugged her and tried to kill her before. Victim. And these people like to victimize victims. Can they do this to them? Can they kick in their door when they're not home? Set up button cameras. Watch them. Hmm? Stalk them. Can they break they photoshopped a shower scene in the other room to make it look weird? Can you wake up with bruises? Get sick on drinks and not know what happened to you and not want to know why you were sick? Because it's the amnesia drug she'll never remember. You wouldn't know what happened to you. So, until you say something stupid. And then use it against you. Huh? And who the hell would be stupid enough to fall for that? Exactly. Exactly. Wake up, people. I got a lot more witnesses. You want me? Even Amy, my next door neighbor. What was it? March 24th, 5th, or 6th. I'll have to look at it. 1 1 30. They're out there screaming, admitting to framing me. I'm wishing they didn't do it because those people raped me. If I'm better for you, if I'm better for shame on you. I know I wish we wouldn't have done it. Those people even raped her. I feel better about everything. Amy's like, I thought. My husband thought I could hear that clear in my apartment. I went to work for my client out on Turquoise Street. They're like, we all heard that bastard admit to framing you. My family didn't know anything about this. And if Melissa's that stupid, where she made all that stuff up and she knows the police already know it, then put her in jail if she wants to say she's an extortionist, drugger, kidnapper, and she needs to go to jail because she's that stupid, that she's trying to extort money out of stalking and drugging and kidnapping. More likely they're lying on her. Because they were lying on my other daughter-in-law and son. And then my other son. They're just lying. It's Michelle's sick, mentally ill family causing hate crimes. And that, uh-huh. And that, that, uh, agent that's a family, friend, whatever. The one they call that, they call him well, but the other people around me are calling him the agent that called me back. Like his name may not be well. So, who wants to insult me for the pathetic ex-girlfriend's family? They don't get money. You know why I was never questioned of any wrongdoing? Because they found all the kids lying and googling for the girlfriend to get the house. They're documenting the games or pretend. They, yeah, they call them fucking shit. My family should be ashamed of mean jokes. And in front of Becky, um, my one neighbor, she's a laundromat lady in Louisville, February 7th. Uh, 22, around noon in Giant Eagle. My phone's bumped. They're in there calling them fucking lying through the little bastards. We get out, and they're outside blaming Will. I said, Will did this to her. I said, look, Will did a little with the case and left it on his desk. Will did do this. Like they said, um, November 11th, they were in there and saying, you know, we were supposed to be out, out driving around protecting her, and Will's saying that he taped her before I know. Wow. What would Will be doing in my house before? And I never talked to him except for the time on the phone when he badgered me. It was the first time I talked to him. So why would he be in my home illegally? You're gonna arrest him, right? Because he can't. They can't just call him from Michelle and him Photoshop scenes and him date rape drug me. They put him in jail, right? Because police and agencies can only be in a home under threat of life. It's entrapment, huh? And then it's stalking, and then attempted murder with kidnapping under drugs. Put him in jail, right? While well, they were on um, 
November 11th, 20 to about well, 10 o'clock in the morning, Third Street Mass, when it's just that idiot stealing, trying to steal everything for his family. That's exactly what's going on and only what's going on is that idiot stealing everything for his family from her. Everything she had in life for his own family. November 8th, 22, Zippo uh, Library on 12th Street, Maslin. Uh, Krista, the family uh, church counselor, she should know better, was following me around, was stalking me and watching me in my day have group. Waited outside by the van. She wasn't too far off and she came up and and she's staring at me. I thought, I'm going to take care of this. I got everybody in the van. I'm like, she's like, hi, how are you? I said, not that good. I said, um, my ex um, tried to have me murdered for him and uh, retired Judge Pete's daughter, Michelle, to get everything. They photoshopped shower scenes, date, rape, drug confession. She's like, oh, you'll be found innocent. And found innocent? I said, that makes me a victim. I said, found innocent? Uh, I already was years ago. Um... um I just passed another FBI background check. I saw an innocent of everything years ago. And I said, I got my med search, da da da. I show up at my clients, my second job, home health care. Michelle's outside, Krista called me. How not funny this is. Um, it, all the tapes before were just the people helping us get everything. That's it. Nobody should say a word. I actually, she told me she takes care of people for a living and just got a medical license. I called him. He said that figures that's what she's doing for a living. She always did really good taking care of people before. And no, none of this is funny. All the tapes before were all the people just helping us get everything. And then all these people just helped us get everything afterwards. That's it. Nothing else. And all those tapes before were them and not her. Nobody should say a word. Krista's right. None of this is funny. Michelle goes to Faith Family Church. She's a young blonde girl. Bragged her dad was an FBI agent. And that she could have me beat and raped. And she could have anybody beat and raped. And she was a peace sweater girl. Krista knows who she is. None of this is funny.